two lamps from India that a friend bought me while I was over there. I'm, I'm getting deja vu as if I've featured these before, but I'm not really sure. However, let's explore them anyway and repair this one. Well, if we can repair it, because um, this one is not doing what it's supposed to do. It, it's got its little flashing, colour-changing lights here. But the neon flicker flame is just barely glowing at the bottom. And my friend said that when he went into the shop, this was the last one in the shop. It was the one in the window display. And when he said to the guy, uh, do you have others? The guy said, no, this is it. Uh, if you want it, you can have it. Uh, the reason it's not flickering because it needs to warm up. And the guy was talking shit. It, it never warmed up. But my friend got it anyway because he knew that, you know, I just appreciate them for what they are. Lurid religious tat. Don't you just love it? The Indians love their lighting. I like that, that part of their culture too. Their religions are much more fun. So they come apart quite easily, despite the fact that there's glue plastered all down them. You can see where it's been dribbling down the side. These are very much sort of handmade. And when you open it up, there is a big sooty mark in the lead up to that uh, the neon lamp. And lots of crusty tape. Can I pull that off? Ooh. Oh, they're two smoky resistors. Let's take a look at them. Look at that. Let's see if I can focus down on that. They're, they're smoked. Can you read the colour code? Yes, that's right. It's black, 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 black. That's correct. Uh, let's take a closer look at those, in fact. Is there anything left to the colour code at all? Uh, there is blue, grey, and then something very vague. And then also a uh, tolerance is very vague. So uh, not terribly helpful. Let's get this out. I'll tell you what, I'll take the whole lot out. Where are my side cutters? And I'll just pop these little things out. This is a bean cap lamp holder. I guess they use them in India too. It's common in the UK. And if you just prise these little pins out, everything should hopefully just drop out. Maybe it won't drop out. Maybe I'm telling porkies. I may be telling porkies. Oh no, there it goes. So what do we have? We have a delightful... Is there a discharge resistor? There is a discharge resistor. One meg, that's good. What's the value of the capacitor for the LEDs? It's 0.22 microfarad, 220 nano. And it's got the lovely... Typical of these, it's got the lovely circuit board, which is so functional. Uh, let me just draw this out. Hold on. Notepad. Focus down onto there. What they have... Oh, quite a big resistor as well. So they've got the two terminals coming in. One has a capacitor on it with a discharge resistor, so that's 220 nanofarad. Classic capacitive dropper for this application. And it's got what appears to be a one mega ohm resistor across it. Hold on. Brown, black, green. One zero and five zeros, one mega ohm. And it's uh, designed to discharge that capacitor. If it wasn't there, you'd get a sting off the pins at the back of the lamp if it held a charge. And it's got a very generous inrush limiting resistor of 100 ohms. Quite a high power rating as well. That looks like a 1 watt resistor. It's been, Yeah, it's metal film, so it's probably 1 watt rate it's rated at. And it's going to a very, very simple bridge rectifier. They've literally got the square circuit board with pads on each corner. And they've got a diode actually configured as a bridge rectifier on it. So they'll be pointing that way. This will be the AC. This will be AC. That'll be positive and that'll be negative. But they've also taken those in to pads there. And they've got a, a capacitor sat on that as well. What's the value of the capacitor? Let me just bend this resistor back. It is a 400 volt capacitor. Is it? Or is it they gone for a higher value of capacitance at lower voltage? I'm not even seeing anything here. Am I looking at the right side here? Hold on, let me just... Uh, 50 volts, 33 microfarad. Okay. Right, 50 volt, 33 microfarad. That's quite an odd value of capacitor. It also means that when the if the... LEDs go open circuit, that capacitor is going to spew its guts, as they do. It will fail in a sort of sizzling, popping its lid off type of way. So the circuitry looks like this. It's got the capacitor across it. 
and then it's got the LEDs. Lots of LEDs in series. And these are the simple LEDs that just alternate between either red and blue or red and green. And it means there's always one LED on, so they're not actually ever going to go open circuit. Well, unless they fail. So, 50 volt, 33 microfarad. I'll write that in over there. That is the circuitry. The neon lamp, they've used two, what I'm guessing... Now, typically with a neon lamp like this, in the on 220 to 240 volts, you have roughly 30k in series. So, they've used two 68k resistors in parallel to give roughly 34 uh, K. So I'm guessing the missing band is orange. And that means that their dissipation has been probably over half a watt each. And these are quarter watt resistors. Right, tell you what, let's do some experiments. I'm going to set an experiment up and we shall test this neon lamp at various currents by bridging lots of resistors in parallel until it reaches a decent intensity. One moment, please. Well, it's fixed, but not the way I was expecting. Let me show you this in the dark, and I'll warn you in advance that it is quite flashy, so if you're sensitive to flashing lights, uh, turn away now. Ah, yes, sparkling in its Indian glory, but with a very different little neon lamp here, you'll see. It is a flick of flame lamp, but it's not the original one, which is over here. So watch your eyes, the light is coming back. So it turned out there was a problem with this lamp right down at the base. I don't know what's actually happened to it, but uh, it's degraded. And these resistors, although they were absolutely smoked, I mean, they are just black. The rough value I thought they might be was at 68K. They were fairly close to that. And just out of interest, I swapped in a 33K high power resistor, put it in series, and it passed all the correct current for one of these lamps. But the orange glow was just basically concentrated at the bottom. It wasn't covering the whole lamp. So I looked for alternatives. One possibility was to find, well, order up uh, another neon candle lamp and try and get glass globe out. But then I thought, what if I use a sort of one of the Christmas lighting type lamps? Because you get these ones for the uh, little uh, neon candelabras, or that you get strings of the neon flick flame lamps. But that would have required a dedicated base, which is exactly what I did. Let me just put this out the way. I 3D printed an insert that goes in place of this, and it sits in from inside. Let me just open it. It sits in from inside with lots of glue schmooed all over it, as the original construction had. And it's sized to take a M10 lamp holder. M10 can be used in 240 volts, but it's not the best choice, but it is what these little lamps use. So this, uh, the uh, contacts fold back and it pushes down with force into that. And then when you've done that, it can screw in. But there is a slight problem with that. This is 3D printed. It's 3D printed in PLA, which is one of the softer plastics. And the base of these lamps, because of the way they work, they have that smoke and hot resistor inside that certainly on 240 volts versus 120 volts, it's dissipating a lot more power. It's usually the resistor in these that fails instead of the lamp itself. In Well, in Europe anyway. So to reduce the dissipation of that, I put a 100 nanofarad resistor in series with this lamp. And it's got a 1 mega ohm resistor across it. The reason for that is because otherwise you can get a slight tingle off the pins when you touch them if it holds a charge. So that's a discharge resistor. And that has reduced the power accordingly. So everything is now reassembled. Uh, another thing I noticed, these, the LEDs they've put in these, they've stuck the LED through from this side and they've basically just folded leads over and twisted them. They've not soldered them. And then they've glued these things on the top. Uh, it's quite a neat, it must be quite laborious actually making the lamp. But... Uh, now this screws in, and unlike the, some of the very cheap and nasty uh, adapters you get on eBay, this one has a shroud that uh, does prevent finger contact. Could have been slightly higher, I think, but it's not bad. And hopefully the temperature of that, it certainly didn't get hot during testing, but hopefully the temperature of that will stay low enough that it doesn't soften the plastic and make the lamp holder work loose. But that is the fix of this uh, Vina lamp with the faulty flame. It wasn't the resistors I was expecting. It turned out it was the neon globe itself. And now you can actually just 
unscrew and change the lamp if needs be, if it ever ages. Although having said that, with the capacitor in series and the built-in resistor, the dissipation will be reduced to the point that the lamp will probably last, well, forever probably, relatively speaking. So that is it. The interesting Indian ceremonial lights, decorative lights, um, and, well, a slight hack. I suppose ultimately you could use this to do anything you wanted with them. But uh, nice result. Uh, that was quite fun to make. It took me about 10 minutes to design this object in OpenSCAD, and then it took me about 15 minutes to actually print it off. So it was quite a fast project that way.